Good morning. I have been sitting here for a little while creating videos for the new classes that I'm getting ready to launch and just thinking about the different topics and the different questions that I'll be covering along with some new resources and tools to help you dive more deeply into your personal and ancestral research and healing. And one of the things that keeps coming up for me are just loads of questions about who people are. And I shared something on Facebook this morning, this little graphic that basically said, if you knew me between 2018 and 2020, allow me to reintroduce myself. And I think many of us feel that way because we have changed so much. We have gone through so many difficult situations since 2018 that it forced us to look at our stuff and to do some healing. Although for some, they just chose to go back into their shell, crawl back into their bodies, ignore it, um, which created other things for them. It's all a choice. There's no judgment, it's just what, what, what are we choosing in that moment? And sometimes there are different blocks in our way or still lessons we have to learn before we can remove those blocks and be willing and maybe brave enough to start looking at these different things that are holding us back. So as I've been thinking about my own journey since 2018 and some really difficult things I had to move through and especially the events of the last year and a half, it feels at this time, and I think many of you can probably relate to this, that people and things are showing up that are giving us the final exam. The final exam might be somebody from our past showing up and you know saying, oh, I would really love to get together again or whatever, or I'd love to just go hang out. And you know, it can be family member, past friend, past relationship, you know, it doesn't matter. A lot of those people are showing up and they're kind of repeating things that happened in the past. But is that who we really are? And why are we still spinning in that? There are a lot of things also coming up for these final exams we seem to be taking around our family history. And I spent the majority of last week diving into my own research, which I don't do very often. And on a specific side of the family with a couple of specific people and talking to family members about their memories of these people, or you know, what did you hear? Or what are the questions that were never answered? And it really opened my eyes to why some of the people in our family have been perceived the way they are and what might have shaped them because some of the things that shaped them into who they were kept repeating down the generations and even I dealt with them. So when we look at our family history and we look at our own history, especially now as we're moving through this time where humanity is waking up more and more, it's really important to notice those patterns. And I'll give you a good example. When I look at my great grandma Bessie and her life and what shaped her based on the stories I've heard about her, and I do have a class coming, Why Was Grandma So Mean? Where we're going to kind of take apart our genealogy research and look at some of the factors. When I looked at the number of Babies and toddlers lost, whether they were her siblings, her children, her grandchildren. I began to notice patterns because I also lost babies, the same number that it seemed were being lost in every generation before me. Not every generation, my mom didn't. But before that, there seems to be a pretty consistent pattern. And I look at and wonder, well, how did they deal with it? Because times were very different. Or did they have anybody to support them through it? Because I didn't. The person that should have supported me through that couldn't shut down. So how much of that is still sticking around in my field? And sometimes events like this, and you know, you could also look at the family history and notice, well, there's been a specific illness. Like, 
I'm Czech, as far as I've researched, and gosh, everybody had heart disease, probably from all the rich Czech food that they ate. Um, but there could have been other factors there. It could be a specific type of cancer or something that is moving down through the generations, or a mental illness that is moving down, or just a pattern of lack or fear, scarcity, anything that we can look at and notice. When we take the time, and again, we have to be brave enough to step into this, we can really begin to do some deep healing for ourselves. And when we heal ourselves, we're actually healing our ancestors. So my invitation to you right now is to look at your family history, maybe with a different perspective. Try and remove some of the lenses that have been in your way as you've looked at some of them before. And try to notice the patterns that are showing up. What has happened to them that's also happened to you? Because all of this can be changed. We can heal it. We can release it. What are the things that weren't spoken about? Like what happened to your veteran when he came home from war? And I have a class coming out on that called What's Wrong With Daddy? And we're going to explore that. And in all of these classes that I'm getting ready to offer in September and October, you're going to walk away with a lot of worksheets that have a lot of questions on them. Because I do feel that these topics, while maybe a little bit taboo, um, have not been discussed in the genealogy and military research communities. And in the ancestral healing communities, we, we start to look at this, but I think we can look at it in a different way. And I'm going to give you different tools and resources to help you with that. But these questions will help you start to look at the different layers of your life. And while some of it won't be easy and you'll put it off, that's okay. And some of the questions that I'm even asking you today may not fit into where you are right now. And that's okay. But I think it's time that humanity starts to look at these different things that we have been avoiding because history is repeating itself again. We are kind of back in a World War II scenario and a lot of people may not see it or they see aspects of it. But there were lessons that we didn't learn then that are showing up again now, whether it's on a collective level or a family level. What is the unfinished business from World War II? There have also been aspects of Vietnam that are surfacing recently. What are the unhealed aspects of Vietnam in our families? What are the unhealed aspects of more recent wars in our families? How does this affect us? How does this affect the children that we're raising or the future children to come in our families? So I, while this is kind of a heavy topic today, I invite you to sit with some of these questions and please watch my social media. And if you have subscribed to my newsletter um, in a couple more days, you're going to be getting an email with the links to the September and October classes where we're going to tap into the military research because I kind of miss teaching that. And we're going to tap into some of these questions that just aren't being asked, that it's time to ask. So if you haven't subscribed to my email list, there's a link in the bio for that. You can also check out what else is available on Ancestral Souls Wisdom School. And also take a look at my YouTube channel because I've posted a lot of videos there recently that start to address some of these questions and just give you a start point to look at your own family history and your own life. I hope to see some of you on these new class journeys with me and hopefully we can create some change, some much needed change and healing in the world.